Okay, is it working? It is, right? Oh, wait a second. Okay. Um, let me just share my screen real quick. Okay, so it seems like I'm on. So, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Stan. I am a student worker, a studio lab, and a Princeton student. Um, I'm on my second year now. A studio lab, I work at the soft space, soft station, where on the sewing machine and all that jazz. That um, so today I'm on air with um, Rad Lab, which is a program within. Studio Lab, basically just a low key place for people to share their passion, their project on whatever can be technology, art, entertainment, everything. Um, yeah. Um, so we are on every Wednesday at eight p.m. And today's Wednesday is eight p.m. Okay, cool. Um, so my topic today is going to be on my art. Um, basically how I come to like this liking Dadaism which is um, an art movement from the 1920s, um, fat object sculpture um, mixed with some minimalism. Um, and after I thought about the things that influence my art, I'm going to talk a little bit about what I have been working on recently. Okay, so let's jump right into it, I guess. Okay. So the first topic is Dadaism and fat object sculpture. Um, I'm going to introduce some of the pieces from this era that I think really capture um, the jazz guys of the movement, as well as the pieces that influence me the most. Um, so the first one is Fountain by Marcel Duchamp. Um, as you can see, it is just like an urinal turned sideways, um, but the story behind it is pretty interesting. So for those of you who don't know, Michel Duchamp is um, basically the founder of that, the Dadaism movement. Um, and this piece actually is considered like the first found object sculpture as well as like one of the leading, I guess, the founding pieces of Dadaism. So the story of that in 1912, um, Michel was supposed to be a part of um, an exhibition in Paris. Um, one of his paintings um, was named Nude on the Stairway, um, right at the current time. That painting is actually considered like, one of the most um, provocative and, I guess, one of the world groundbreaking painting of the era since it didn't capture a steel object, but it tried to capture the movement of a lady. Um, so anyway, because the title of the work contained the work nude in it, um, the committee behind the exhibition basically did not like the title. So they had, so they had Michelle withdraw the work at the last minute. Um, and that really kind of pisses him off. And it became one of like the changing point in his life. Um, a few years later in New York, I'm pretty sure, um, Michelle was also part of an exhibition. And after a conversation with his friend about the incident in Paris a few years earlier, he decided to make this fountain sculpture um, to, I guess, what they said was the best integrity of his colleagues. Um, and you can see this sculpture is also provocative since it brought a, I guess, dirty object. It's usually found in the bathroom. It's not really aesthetically pleasing. And then he turned it into an artwork. Um, and at the end of the day, after a lot of legal battle, actually, he was able to have it. No, he was still not able to have it um, exhibited in the original, in the New York exhibition. And what he did was that he had to have photographer independently photograph this work. Um, and a sad thing is that since it is like, 
I guess, very ordinary. Um, someone actually threw this away after a few years, and now the, or the original version is lost, and no one knows where it is. So every few years, um, people would like make replica of this. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't know what to say. Uh, okay, so the next one, also by Michelle Duchamp. It's called LHOOQ. Um, I actually don't know what LHOOQ stands for. Um, I don't think anyone knows either. Michelle has never really disclosed what LHOOQ means. Um, so it's really just a title of the artwork. And it's just contain a, a copy of the Mona Lisa, but he has drawn some mustache on it. Um, and really, that's it. I like this one because I think it captured that item very well. Um, like, just looking at it, you think it's funny. Like, why would someone draw a mustache on Mona Lisa? But also, it's very. Wait a second. <laughs> um, yeah, it's funny, but also, it's very real. Like, I guess all of us, when you look at, you know, a person on a newspaper or something, when you were little, always get that urge of like drawing something on their face just to make them look funny and stupid, I guess. Um, and here Michelle did exactly that. Um, we show the kind of whimsy and comedic part of um, Dadaism. And it also challenges like the classical idea of art and what it should be. And before, you see art as something very serious. So that's something that has to be beautiful, conventionally beautiful. But here, he just put a start on Mona Lisa, which is a very famous artwork, as everyone knows. Um, and I think this, art, this piece also connects to Michelle in a personal level, um, because it played with the idea of, I don't know how to say this, Inter, intergenderism, I guess. So like giving Mona Lisa something very masculine. And then later in Michelle's life, he actually um, became a transgender. And yeah, basically he started dressing up as a woman, um, but he still used Puna, he, him, I'm pretty sure. Um, and yeah, he just lived his life very freely. Uh, yeah. Uh, why just... Sorry. Okay. And the last one from, um, I guess, the high of Dadaism, um, the 1920s, is a man ray, it's a gift. Um, so the story behind it is also very funny. Um, after an exhibition in 1920, which is, no, 1921, which is man ray, which was man ray's first exhibition ever, um, he was walking home. From, with a friend and passed by a hardware shop in Paris and he saw this in the like in the what is this in the display and then he went in and with very limited French he got this um iron came back to his studio found some nail and just basically stuck the nails on the iron I like this piece a lot because um the idea behind it is that when you modify some object minimally, um, you can give the object a totally new meaning and function. Um, Manray actually commented that he used to like to um, tear dresses apart, like making ribbon out of the fabric on the dress. Um, he realized the movement of the people dancing in those, in those dresses. Um, when he looks at the iron, it was like the iron used to flat things out, not to melt things up, but he added the nail. So the nail kind of acts as like a knife, I guess. Just to like tear the dresses apart, get like those, those strip of fabric. Um, and yeah, he gave an iron, which flats things out a totally opposite meaning, a totally opposite function. And just in general, when I look at this iron, feel pretty uncomfortable. It's like the nails up there, it's nice already. Um, it kind of give me anxiety, something like so dangerous, even though it's so ordinary, because I don't know what it does exactly. 
Uh, okay. Oh, a fun fact about this, um, even though it's the, so, so, uh, <clears throat> sorry, even though the sculpture is called a gift, uh, Manry actually had his friend like draw a lot to see who would win this, who would win this sculpture as like a gift. Um, I'm not sure who won it, but yeah, this is a funny story. And also, um, just like the fountain by Michelle, this piece also got lost in time. And now like on the exhibited version of this actually replicas. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, so this is a person I just want to introduce briefly. His name is Richard Hosenbeck. I'm not sure if I say it right, but yeah. He is um an editor for a lot of Dadaist magazine because um Dadaism is not just an art movement. It's also it's very political, um, very liberal, but um, I'm not going to get into it today since it's not really what I research about and know not about. But this man, um, he lived in Germany. So when the Nazi party came into power, he had to leave um, and went to New York to work as a psychologist. Um, what is special about him is that years later when he almost died in like, the like 1970s when Dadaism is not on, at its peak anymore. And a lot of people said that it had died. Um, he still believed that Dadaism mm -hmm. is still alive and strong, which I really, um, which really inspired me because, you know, an old man and still keeping his idea of something he loved and show it to other people. Is, it is a scary thing to do. And this man right here has inspired me to do that every day. Okay. So fast forward a little bit. Um, I want to show you guys Boone's head by Pablo Picasso. Um, it was made in 1942. Um, and found object sculpture has been like kind of the norm for the last 20 years. But I don't know why Picasso's this piece from Picasso is still so famous and people consider it to be um, like also one of the founding pieces of found object sculpture, even though it's like 20 years after Marcel Duchamp's fountain. Um, just interesting to me that way. And about his process, it's also very funny. And one day he just <clears throat> saw a bicycle seat next to a rusty set of handlebar. He saw a bull and then he just put them together. It's super cool. And the part about like, <clears throat> if you were only to see the bull's head and not the bicycle seat and handlebars from it, the sculpture would lose some of its impact. Um, that really remind me of brutalist um, architecture, where like the architect doesn't try to, to like hide the material that made up the building which resulted in a lot of building with like bare concrete or brick outside you see on the structure on the mark that made up the building super yeah um, the next thing i would want to talk about is um, minimalism and fox um, spontaneity sorry if i said it wrong oh so here's a painting from franz klein I'm actually not sure how to say his last name, Kailine or Kai. Um, I have no idea. But either way, the painting is named Untitled, which is um, actually a normal thing for France because almost all my painting is like Untitled 1, Untitled 1, Untitled 2. When you look at it from like, at the first glance, it's very simple. It's like some splash of white and black paint together. Mm. And it's, it gives the impression of something that's done in like an eye blink. It's like, mm -hmm. I want this here and then I'm just going to splash some paint here. But actually, it's not that easy. Um, all these paintings, the composition, the color use, all the stroke, it's not all planned very carefully by France. And even though it gives, let me see, hold on, let me say how, how to say this. 
even though it, it gives the impression of something is, is, is done quick, it's done with a lot of a lot of thoughts. Um, and I just like it because it confuses the the audience, like what the artist's intention here is. Um, and yeah, it just looked very pleasing to me as well. I don't know why. Very simple, but very captivating. Yeah. Okay. So the next one, I think this is the last art group I'm introducing actually. It's called Morning Moon by Anne Truitt. Um, Anne Truitt passed away in 2004. Very sadly, she's one of my favorite artists. Um, so this is nothing, just a piece of wood. And it painted um, bluish white on top and then pinkish in the bottom. Um, I don't know why. It's just very minimal. I don't know why I like it. It's very minimal. It's pleasing to look at. Um, it confuses me because I don't know why it's named Morning Moon. Um, I don't know why the why is there. I don't know why the pink is there. It just confuses me a lot. And yeah, I wish I could know the meaning behind this. But yeah, I'll, I'll talk about it later. <clears throat> okay. So talking about meaning, what is the meaning of meaning? Um, so for me, meaning is an invention. Like something means something because you think it. Um, it's not something you put there to fill a void, I guess. And I'm sure a lot of philosophers would back me up on this. Um, I have to find article and stuff to read up. But I'm sure it's some kind of philosophical question that have been asked before. And I have Shakespeare to back me up on this as well. There's nothing either good or bad, but thinking makes it so. Um, this is actually in Hamlet, and he said this before the famous to be or not to be speech of his. Um, yeah. And let's go back to Andrew. It. So when I say meaning is an invention, for me, especially in art, sometimes I look at things and I have no idea what you, what they mean, um, what they stand for. And honestly, it just embarrasses me. And I'm sure some other people out there will feel the same way as well. Um, so what do I do in those times where I don't understand something? Let's see, it's presented in front of me with supposed meaning, like supposed artistic meaning. Um, I think, so obviously, when I look at this, why is this white and blue up here? Why is it pink down here? Why does this sculpture look like it's hovering above the ground? Hmm. Why is the name Morning Moon? I have to like ties the, the name <clears throat> to the artwork somehow. And that is when like the meaning get invented, I guess. So go up to me. For me personally, I make things without thinking. Um, it's not very, um, I get, um, what is the word, very shallow. Um, but when I make things, um, I don't think like I should make something that represents something. But I just I just think that I should make something that look cool. And then when, when I'm finished with them and I look back, I think like, wow, this look like this. Um, this represent this. Um, so most of the time, that is how my thought process go. With a, with a sculpture, um, I find the material first, and then um, I think of what they represent. Um, so in my first semester, I took um, sculpture one with um, Professor Ken. Um, he's not here today, obviously. Um, but a lot of my sculpture would just be things that I throw together and, and make something that's so pleasing, pleasing to me. And then as a critic, I would love to hear what other people think about those. Um, and I would love to confuse people by saying things that completely contradict, like contradict with um, what they said in the critic. Um, I think it's very funny. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what they thought though. <laughs> okay. I guess it's not a good time to ask some question, I guess. Anyone have any question I can answer? 
is about like anything from that I zoom myself to champ to um and true Franz Klein and meaning of meaning. I'm gonna wait for like two minutes since yeah. Um, how okay, can I see? No. Okay. Well, um, I saw what is this? Taylor's. I'm sorry if I said your name wrong, but yeah. I'm pretty sure this is my child champ in his like cross dressing day, right? No, pretty cool, yeah. <laughs> and Brandon said thought on this image. I'm pretty sure this is like Class Deer by Man Ray. I'm not sure whose artist is, but yeah, I have seen this before. Um, what do I think of this? Um, I have no idea. This is one of the few things that when I look at, I just feel very confused, like. I mean, yeah, I get that the glass represent deer, but other than that, like, what am I supposed to say? Um, I mean, it does look cool, I guess, but really, I don't have any comment. It just look really, what is the word? In place, I guess. There's nothing out of the ordinary to it, besides that the deer is a little bit round. Yeah. Okay, so let me show some of the things that I have been making, as well as like how I made them, I guess. <laughs> okay, I hope you guys are seeing this. Um, so this piece right here is called coffee. Um, I made this in the Freak Chemistry Labs toilet, which is um I don't know carbon unconventional place to make sculpture but i was just my hand after my shift at um, the organic lab and someone had left a cup there which filled with soap um you cannot see it from this picture but it's like halfway filled with soap um and so i loaded and thought to myself why is there a cup here and then i look at the soap dispenser i'm like um interesting and then I told the coffee maker studio lab, which I used several times before. And so I put the cup under the, the under the dispenser. Um, and yeah, it reminded me of coffee, so I named it so I named it coffee. Yeah, I don't know what happens with cup though. I hope no one like threw it away or something. It could look pretty cool if it stayed that way next year when I come back. Oh wait a second. <laughs> Yes, it is um one of my new work creation. Um, I cut a stole from Franz Klein, and named it Untitled. Actually, a lot of my other sculpture are so unti uh, so untitled. Um, just because one, I feel lazy naming things. It's like, yeah, just lazy. And second, I don't want to limit my audience imagination. To what the work would mean by giving something a name yeah so this is i actually cover an old canvas which i had painted um i think the london skyline yeah i painted the london skyline on this canvas um like three years ago but i didn't like it anymore so i covered it in blue paint and then I cut out several pieces of the canvas, making the hole, as you can see on the top left, bottom left, middle right, and also bottom right, but I cover the one uh, bottom right. Um, yeah. 
what is the meaning of this? I actually, I actually don't know what the meaning of this is. Um, oh my God. So let's talk, okay. So I thought, um, I just thought of the idea. Um, when I did this, I was thinking of a piece by, oh, I forgot his name, Fonata, I think, um, where he just like scored the canvas. So it's like a canvas, a blind canvas, but with literally a slit in the middle of it. Um, I thought looking behind the canvas would be pretty cool. It's like looking at a wall and stuff. Um, so that's why I did it for this piece. It's like picking behind, picking behind what's behind artworks and like looking at the artists. Um, and you know, potentially there can be something back there that you don't see. Um, and up top, I, it was just so empty up there. So I got some JoJo string that I used to play JoJo, but I don't anymore. So I have like 300 of those just lying around my floor, I guess. So I used those to make that weird thing up there. And then for the red behind, I just took a piece of A4 paper and I slapped it back there. Um, I like the contrast between blue and red. Um, and it also contrasts with like the white hole um, on the bottom left and on the middle right. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Um, this is my newest one actually. Wait, no. Yeah, it is. It's my newest one. It's cool. It's also untitled. Um, it consists of 13, I think, um, small white canvas on my wall. Um, the idea I had in mind when making this was making something that is look a little bit ordered, but also a little bit distorted. So basically, I wanted to make a square that is divided into nine and then mess up a little bit and then have something out the ordinary onto them, which is the 13th. Wait a second. This is 10. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Which is the 10th canvas. It's like laying on top of all the other squares. Um, I think it's really pleasing to look at. Um, this is called I like the symmetry. Even though there's no symmetry here, I like the square and how they form like just add a weird shape within them. Um, yeah, I'm looking at them on the wall right now. It's pretty cool. <laughs> okay. So this is one of the pieces where I made because I just wanted a laugh. Oh my God. Because I just wanted a laugh, um, yeah. So for those of you who don't know, Picasso is an art club on campus that I am a, um, and for one of the prom that they had, it was um, Earth. Um, a lot of people draw like an actual Earth, I think, and submitted to the prom. But honestly, I'm just not artistic enough to like draw an actual Earth. So I said, what if I just draw Earth from a very, very far away that no one can make it out as Earth, but it is still Earth. So I look up an image, and I literally use the keyword Earth from very far away. And this was the first image that came up. Um, you know, this, this, this was not the first image that came up. The first image that came up was something that looked like it. Um, so I just based on that image and I open paint. Um, make the background black, and then select the pen tool and make some white dot on background. Um, wait a second, Cynthia has a question. Is sculpture to be really is it something you want to continue? So, was the thing in the corner something you may able to do no longer? Um, so Yes, sculpture is my preferred medium, um, mostly because I don't like drawing. Um, I don't like drawing, I don't like painting. Um, I spending time on something that is like, take like 13 hours to complete and then look hyper realistic. And be beyond that, there's like no, not really a point of creativity. 
just sound very boring to me. That's why I don't paint nor do I draw that much. Um, all my drawing actually very distorted. Um, yeah, I don't like anyone. I, I, don't, I don't think anyone would like or enjoy my drawing. So I don't really show them anywhere. Um, and I am not sure if I would pursue this after Princeton. Um, but at Princeton, yes, I'm actually trying to get a visual art certificate in, um, and my medium is going to be sculpture. So I hope to do it more next year. Yeah. Um, so something info. So, okay. And I have always wanted to do art since like before high school, but I didn't really have mentor in art. Like my high school, my art teacher literally just like gave me a, a canvas and told me to paint this, paint this, and he didn't really teach me anything. So yeah, coming to Princeton, attending the sculpture call really expanded my mind and exposed me to a lot of things that I have never heard or seen before. So it's both something that I wanted to do for a long time before and come from an influence within the course I took. Um, Let's see. Yeah. Okay. So that is actually like the last one that I have um, on, the sl on the slideshow. But I also want to show some other things that I've been working on. Okay. So um, this is called one fold origami. It's not actually one fold. There are two of them. I hope you can see it. Um, but yeah, the idea is that take a piece of paper, make one or two fold, and then transform it to something else. Um, I really enjoy it because it's challenging, but also fun at the same time. Um, I have been working on these a lot in the last couple of days. Um, I made some pretty interesting looking stuff that I would love to transfer it onto like a bigger piece of paper or something. It looks really cool when you like try to stand it up. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and here as well, one of my favorite things, look really neat, it's kind of like a cloak, yeah. <laughs> wait, 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 um, uh, one second. Wait, what? Oh my god, I was speaking. Oh, my bad, guys. Yeah, I was showing my sculpture, but I have screen share on. Oh, okay. So I'm going to show them again. <laughs> Sorry, Brandon. Sorry, everyone who's watching. So here's one of the pieces I made. Actually, two. So here's it on the front, this is the side that I want to show. And here's it on the back, the side that I may want to show, maybe, maybe not, I'm not sure. But yeah, I would love to transform this into something bigger. Um, so I can hang up on the wall. Uh, okay, here's another one I tried to show earlier. This one had three fold, but yeah. It make the paper curve in a really interesting way. And I'm pretty sure it can stand on its own as well. It's not on this small piece. Um, this is another one. Uh, you cannot see it very well on screen. Oh my god. <laughs> um, Okay, so Cynthia asked if um, I want to enter. Um, so fashion and sculpture, um, I kind of try to separate them. Even though I share the philosophy when I dress as when I make sculpture, um, I don't really see my clothes being, you know, sculpture because 
yeah, for me, clothes are meant to be worn, and if I made it made them into sculpture, then they cannot be worn. Um, so it's just not something I feel comfortable doing. I might try to do it. Um, I just don't feel comfortable doing it yet. <laughs> and also, yeah, I'm wearing like a jacket because I don't know. I feel kind of like secure and and stuff in a jacket. It's my thing. <laughs> okay. Let me read through some of the chat here. God. <laughs> Whoa, this sculpture looks really cool. <laughs> um, yeah. So basically, that is what I have for this rat lab. Um, it's not that much. Mostly, it's me talking about, you know, things that influence me and in my artwork. Um, if anyone has any comment, any question, just like things about art in general, just any opinion on my art, I would be like <clears throat> super excited to hear about them. So. I don't know, wait a few minutes. <laughs> yeah, this is actually kind of sad because I tried to have my friends coming over, but I don't think any of them showed up. <laughs> Thank you, Venus. Peeless, oh my God. Do you have a dream project or something that would be really, really big? Um, my dream project, um, sound kind of messed up. My dream is that when I die, people use my body for sculpture. I don't know, maybe like using my ass to paint or something. That would be pretty cool. Um, Thank you, Ellie. <laughs> um, yeah. Just something like you don't know what's being done to you. You just like weirded me out. And when I'm alive, I definitely would not try to do anything like that. But when I'm dead, it's not another story. Um so for men's question, I actually did that. And yeah, I'm not sure like what's the outcome of the pieces were. Um, but yeah, basically I went to a sculpture center in New York as part of my um, sculpture course, course, course of my sculpture course. And they had a lot of catalog and stuff. So I took like 10 of those and then I assembled them like out of the like, inner corner. And then I left them there. Um, no one said anything about them, so I guess I just like brush it off. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> I try to do that. <clears throat> wow, that is so, I don't know, weird. Oh my God. Um, yeah, that's it. Um, thank you so much for coming to my rat lab. Um, <laughs> yeah, very mainstream idea. Okay. Thank you so much for showing up for those of you who did. I had a fun time doing this. <laughs> <laughs>